Hello everyone, my name is Mason Kluatra. I am a student in the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering at Mercer University, and I work in the field of control theory. Today we are going to talk about model-free control. It was originally proposed by Michelle Fleece and Cedric Join in 2013 as a technique to control systems for which we do not have a model of their dynamics. I refer you to their original paper from 2013 if you would like to understand more of the rigorous mathematics behind this technique. If you would like to see an application of model-free control, I refer you to the second paper from 2020, which I co-wrote myself with Dr. McKinthitza from Mercer University and Drs. Fleece and Join. Let's jump right in. Imagine you have a system like this one over here, where we can measure its output y, and we have a reference trajectory y sub r that we want the system's output to follow. We would like to devise a control input u that will make the output of the system y follow the reference y sub r. However, if we don't have a model of their dynamics, of the system's dynamics rather, this becomes quite difficult. To show this on a graph, imagine we have a reference trajectory y sub r. We would want the output of our system to follow this reference as close as possible. This would mean that we would want the error, which we will denote with a lowercase e, of y minus y sub r to go to zero. This would mean that the output trajectory was following the reference perfectly. Now, if we don't have a model of the system's dynamics, we have to write down something that can encompass a wide class of systems. And Fleece and Join propose doing this by using something called an ultra-local model. This is a model that any system, under loose constraints, should follow. Fleece and Join outline what those constraints are in their original paper. This ultra-local model is written as this. We say that y, the output of the system's nth derivative, which we denote with a superscript parentheses m. So if I were to create a key over here of what these terms mean, y to the m at time t is equal to the nth derivative of y of t with respect to time. They say that this is equal to f of t, which is unknown plus alpha times u of t, the control input. So alpha is just a real number and it is the control gain. It's some constant that we are multiplying the control input by and of course u of t is the control input. Now, we can measure y's nth derivative, or we can measure y rather, and at least compute its nth derivative, if that is not measurable by us. And we can devise a control input u. So the only piece of this model that is unknown is f of t. And what does f of t represent? Well, f of t represents everything in the system that y's nth derivative in the control input does not. It primarily represents unmodeled dynamics and external disturbances onto the system. Now, if we wanted to devise a control input u, we would try to solve this model for u, which we can do at this point. It would be one over alpha times y's nth derivative minus f of t. However, we do not know f of t, so we have to estimate it somehow. And luckily, anyone with a introduction to calculus class under their belt has the tools in their back pocket to solve this. So Fleece and Join proposed estimating f of t. So estimate f of t by using the averaging integral. So let's recall what that averaging integral would be. So if we look at f of t, we can say that it is approximately equal to f hat of t, which we are going to equate to one over capital T, integral from lowercase t to capital T to time t, of y's nth derivative 
minus alpha u of t. And we make this uh, variable substitution from t to tau just so that we are being mathematically correct in this integral. So if we interpret this averaging integral, we are integrating over a short time window from t minus capital T to t. And of course, we are uh, just looking at time t. So the length of this window is t, capital T, that is. So one last thing to note is that if t goes to 0, f hat of t goes to f of t. And this is useful. That means the smaller we can cut this window down, the closer or the better approximation of f of t that we can get. Note, though, that integrals have noise filtering properties. That is, if we have a signal such as this y's nth derivative term that has Gaussian mean centered noise in the signal, then integrating that signal will integrate out that mean centered Gaussian noise. So it is kind of a give and take to select the length of your time window, capital T, because the longer it is, the more noise that you will filter out of your signal and have a more stable estimation of f of t. But if you have your length of the window t go to zero, then your estimation of f hat of t gets closer and closer to f of t. So as you are designing your own model-free controllers, keep that in mind. Up until now, we have estimated f of t so that we can better design a controller. However, we haven't really used the fact that we want the error between our output and the reference trajectory to go to zero. That is where we think back to a class such as classical controls or linear control theory and think about the type of error dynamics that we would want. And they would take this form right here where we have e's nth derivative plus some gain km minus 1 time e's m minus 1 derivative all the way down to some gain k naught times er uh, the error itself and we would want that to be equal to zero and this is called a linear homogeneous differential equation and the reason that this is uh, desired is that we can tune these gains, these k's, such that the error will converge to zero in finite time. This is linear stability theory. So if we can somehow make our system have these linear error dynamics, then stabilizing the error would be reduced to a problem of tuning a few gains. Now this is an issue because we don't know anything about the system that we are controlling and it's most likely nonlinear. So let's try to manipulate this and devise a controller that will linearize these error dynamics so that we can simply tune a few gains and get stable linear error dynamics. If we look at a model of order one, we will have from our ultra local model y dot is equal to f of t plus alpha times u of t. And we would want error dynamics that looked like e dot plus kp e is equal to zero. Here I use kp instead of k naught because we tend to call a term that looks like this where we have a gain times the error a proportional term so I use the, su the subscript p here. Now I can expand the equation on the right to get y dot minus y sub r dot is equal to negative kp e and this would imply that y dot is equal to y sub r dot minus kp times e. Notice that I have an equation here in terms of y dot and an equation here in terms of y dot so I can set them equal to each other and solve for u of t. And if I did this, I would get u of t is equal to one over alpha 
minus f of t plus y sub r dot minus kp times e. And this is just about the final form of our controller, but we note we don't actually know f of t, so we have to let uh, u of t, we have to define this to be 1 over alpha minus f hat of t plus y sub r dot minus kp e. Now let's look at the stability of the aerodynamics using this controller down here that we have derived. So we have an ultra local model of order one. So we have y dot is equal to f of t plus alpha times u of t. And we're going to plug in what we have derived u of t to be here. So this is one over alpha times minus f hat of t plus y sub r dot minus kp e. And this implies that y dot is equal to f of t minus f hat of t plus y sub r dot minus kp e. And I can rearrange this equation so that I have e dot plus kp e is equal to f of t minus f hat of t. Now notice that if this term right here is close to zero, then I have that homogeneous linear differential equation that I talked about earlier that we wanted. And that would just mean that f hat of t needs to be a good approximation of f of t. And that's no big deal because we know that the smaller the time window we have when we derived our approximation f hat of t, the closer to f of t that we get. Now, I know that this is by no means a proof of nonlinear stability of the aerodynamics. However, as we have seen in our research, simply stabilizing each ultra local model using this local stability theory is enough to produce good results in practice. I refer you to the work of Michelle Fleece and Cedric Join, and even the work that I have done in collaboration with them to see this in action. Last up, I'd like to talk about intelligent proportional integral derivative controllers, one of which we have already defined for our ultra local model of order one. So if M is equal to one, we said that our control input to the system would be one over alpha times minus f hat of t plus y sub r dot minus kp times the error. This is called an intelligent proportional controller or an IP. And that is because we have a proportional term and we have an numerical approximation f hat of t that updates the system in real time. That's why we call it intelligent. So an intelligent proportional controller. If we were to go up to an ultra local model of order two, we would derive the controller in the exact same way that we did for order one. We would use this ultra local model in the corresponding desired aerodynamics. And we would derive a controller or a control law like this. U of t is equal to one over alpha minus f hat of t plus y sub r dot minus kp e minus kd e dot. And this is called an intelligent proportional derivative controller because we have a proportional term, a derivative term, and again, the intelligent part of updating f of t via f hat of t. If you would like to learn more about model free control, I suggest you stay tuned for future videos on my channel where I will talk about programming model free controllers in a programming language such as Python and then using those programs to deploy model free controllers on real world hardware to stabilize systems such as a quad rotor UAV. Thank you so much for watching.